We started tutoring at Avalon Trace with one Burmese family. And from there, we have grown to about 300 Burmese friends that we serve. And we do it every Tuesday. We've realized as a, that it doesn't take a lot of people to do a, a big things. And, and I challenge other churches out there that, it, you know, don't look at just what, what you can do inside your church. Look outside your church. And it doesn't have to be traveling to a whole other country um, to help these people. It's, there's a lot of people here locally and, and in your communities that can, can benefit from your help. Um, just, just sharing the love of Christ. Epic Church began in uh, 2009. My wife and I discovered there were people who uh, were unchurched in our community. And uh, my wife uh, teaches at a school for newcomers in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, she knew about some of the families there who were from Burma. And so we began to befriend one of those families, a husband, a wife, a brother, and one very young child. And we recognized quickly that they needed to learn English in order that they might find employment. And very quickly that began to expand. Uh, I still remember clearly uh, four years ago, five years ago, out in the front yard at that little small apartment in which they lived. And uh, this little small group of four began to grow very quickly. That began a great journey for us as a, as a missional community. Uh, we had a, tithes and offerings we were receiving. Uh, there was no pastor salary. There is no pastor salary. Um, there's no building to keep up or anything of that nature. So we were able to invest all of our resources that we had uh, into, into helping these folks to meet their needs and us helping them meet the needs they were unable to meet for themselves. So we began to expand. We began to partner with the Piedmont Baptist Association in Greensboro, North Carolina. They allowed us to use their facility. Uh, to uh, have a place to bring uh, these uh, Burmese refugees and immigrants uh, so they could learn the English language and the kids would come for tutoring every Tuesday night. So now a number of churches in Piedmont Association uh, have sent volunteers and different kinds of resources to help out as we have ministered to these, these kids in the name of Christ. This is our sewing area. We call it the barn because we converted this old tobacco barn and storage shed into a facility for us to use for um, Epic Greensboro's Tuesday night sewing ministry that we have with our basically Burmese families and African families. We developed a partnership with one of the major businesses in the area and now they have uh, provided some of their machines in the barn, in the lab we call it, uh, so that these ladies can learn to sew actually on the machines that they would be using in this facility. We've been blessed to have this property here. We have approximately 50, 55 acres here that we have access to that we can, uh, we can plant. We, as you see, we do recreation out here. We do our Bible study. We do our tutoring, our ESL classes, our sewing classes. Uh, so there's a lot going on out here that, uh, that we do, and of course we can always use uh, volunteers. My kids love coming here. They love to help with tutoring. They love to play with the children. They love meeting them in their neighborhood. Um, we come from international backgrounds, so they know what it's like to be newcomers. It's interesting now, some of the Burmese cultural groups I've noticed that wouldn't have anything to do with each other in Burma are now friends here. And that's been the neatest thing I've seen lately. I'm a school teacher and uh, enjoy working with the children. And we saw this as a great opportunity um, to work with uh, the Burmese community and to continue to meet their needs um, and also the needs of their families. I truly enjoy it and maybe it's something that you ought to think about as well. It's great to volunteer. If you are a family looking for a place to serve other international, other international families or just ch children in the community, this is a wonderful opportunity for you. They're making a difference by impacting these people and loving on them and showing them the love of Jesus. A love that um, you can't do because you've read some books. You can't do because you think it's a good thing to do. 
You can only love on them because God is loving them through you. And there's a passion to love these people. And this small congregation began to do that. And bringing association, state convention, and other resources in the community. We're talking about colleges, universities, students. Together, the impact is incredible. And we're now beginning to see a church emerge out of these Burmese refugees. I already know God did it. When you have eight people that can do this, um, that, that is not us, that's God. You know, you say there's a need, and there's somebody, some church, some family that has what they need. Whether it be money, school supplies, uh, we've been able to clothe um, in the early days, we were able to clothe all the families. Now they're able to do that for themselves. But we still have churches that volunteer to give backpacks. Um, and they have the supplies, the basic supplies the kids need in those backpacks. And at Christmas, they have just a couple of toys each, but still, all the families have something. All of this is providing an opportunity for us to be more than just a church, more than a house church to reach others for Christ and to further the kingdom with church plants and growing people and discipling those believers that are precious to us. first came here, they are our second case worker. Like, they did everything they could. They provide us with food, things that we use in kitchen, bathroom, or everything, basically everything. I can't name it, I like, guess a lot. And so, um, if we have appointment, they will take us to appointment or school, everywhere. Um, <laughs> Why do you think they do that? Well, because they love us. <laughs>